Now, before you just get mad and instantly dislike this video, understand that I'm not a fan of it either. I don't like the situation just as much as you might not like it, but I have to just look at things objectively from time to time if I want to do well in this game. Oops. This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion discussion type video. This is something that I really enjoy doing and the topic for this video is going to be why Zodiac Beasts unfortunately will win the North American WCQ. Unfortunately in quotes because I'm not too happy about it as I may have already stated. Um, I don't like how things have degenerated in the essence of how the deck, the Zodiac deck itself has become into a creation that just dominates literally everything that it enters. It dominates every single tournament that it comes into contact with just because of how short-sighted the design for the archetype essentially was. I have just now realized that I'm going to probably get destroyed by some people that are going to bring up the fact that I made a video a few months ago talking about why I didn't understand why people are hating on Zoo in such a fashion and why I really enjoy Zoo for what it allows for the game. Now, understand, that was a completely separate video in its own context. That video was in a previous format where we had Rat at 3, we had Norden. There was a lot of variation that could be done with the Zoo deck at that point. Because Rat Pierre existing at 3 allowed for a lot of interesting innovations and for it to be splashed into a lot of different decks to be an engine that could be utilized. I mean, we had so many different decks at that point that did well right out of the gate with a Zoo engine. There was a Cosmo Zoo deck that topped, there was BA Zoo that topped, there was um, there was Metal Foes Zoo that topped, like Pendulum Variants, all that sort of stuff, and then there was the Pure Zoo deck, and then there was Zoo Infernoid, Zoo Sworn, like there's there's all these different decks that came out of the gate with three Rat Pier, and the accessibility of having three Rat Pier allowed decks to function a lot better as hybrids with Zoo. Now, objectively, they probably weren't as good as pure Zoo, especially as time evolved and the Lunalite combo was introduced and all that sort of stuff. But still, it was an interesting progression of events that got us to where we are today. Now, where we are today is we're at a very, very stripped-down, bare, and basic Zoo deck that barely ever makes rank 4s anymore that aren't Zodiac in name, and... It's just, it's, it's, it's interesting how things have progressed. We started with this deck in Raging Tempest with three Rat Piers and Norden. Things were good for a little while, then progressed out of control with the Lunalite -like combo into Norden. Norden got banned, Rat Pier went to two. Rat Pier went to two, and the deck was still amazing, still really playable, still had really complex play strings because the Lunalite -like combos still existed. And then we've progressed to the point where we're at now, where Norden is gone and now the deck literally is just normal summon any one monster and then stack up into a Dryden and gain some advantage along the way. That's... It's a it's a very, very interesting shift. And I don't enjoy the Zoo deck in its current function. I don't enjoy Zoo Mirrors in their current function. I really enjoyed the Zoo Mirror at YCS Pittsburgh because Norden added a really interesting demographic to the deck. Being able to instant fusion into Norden was another extender, having Terra Top. You had, both of you were playing your deck to its max capacity because you both had an insane number of starter cards, you had great recycling, it was very skill based in terms of what order you sequence things, what made you do what play in terms of what you did with your Norden and all that sort of stuff. Like, it, it became really interesting once Norden went away. Now, arguably, we should have never had Norden to begin with. That card should have been banned a long time before we got Zoo. And, honestly, the format since Raging Tempest probably would have progressed differently had we never had Norden in Zoo decks. Because then the Lunalite -like combo would have never been invented. And then we would have never had to deal with the fact that hybrids became so far outshadowed by pure Zoo because of the Lunalite -like shenanigans that were ensuing. But, like, it's a, it's a it's been a very interesting progression. But the Zoo deck, in its core function, just operates so much more efficiently than every other deck in the format currently. And that's just such a problem 
for anyone trying to do anything. Pendulums for the North American WCQ for Nationals are the best that they have ever been. They have the most support. The Zephyr deck is really good in terms of what it does. The Pendulum Magician deck has gotten a bunch of support back in terms of three Pendulum Call, three Skullcrab Joker. Duelist Alliance is an amazing card. All the new Pendulum Magician cards are amazing. Like, but the problem is, is that they just can't beat Zoo. Because Zoo is so cookie cutter bog standard in what it does now in the form of I'm going to normal summon any one monster in my deck and that one monster is going to become a broad bull which searches another card. It can become a tiger mortar to re-equip any monster from grave to get an additional amount of attack points or effect on the Xyz stack. I'm going to summon Chaka 9 to float back any monster in my graveyard back to the board just to be a floater if it's a ram ram or something like that or just to be an additional body in the form of hammer kong. For additional protection layers and then I'm going to end on a Dryden and then every turn it just becomes more and more now the zoo deck is very very interesting in the fact that it literally takes one monster to do this play because of how cookie cutter standard and stripped down it has become because of the fact that there's not three rats there's no Norden the deck has literally devolved into I'm just going to normal summon or summon this one card and off of this one card I'm gonna do one thing my one end goal is to make Dryden't. And the deck has just become really efficient at doing that. And then every other card in your hands is just things like My Body, Strikes, Barriers, Ash Blossom, Ghost Ogre, Maxi. They're just all other defensive cards. So it just becomes a really hard deck to deal with. Zoo, in its current form, is arguably the best anti meta deck that we've ever had in the game of Yu Gi Oh! And it's a very interesting like outlook when you look at it like that. Zoo itself is an incredibly well-equipped anti-meta deck. So much so that it is the best meta deck. Dryden is just amazing removal. And the fact that any normal summon of your monsters can instantly access any other monster in your deck off of Broadville, can float back a monster off Chalkanine, can re-access a card in your graveyard off Tiger Mortar, all of these different things that all just culminate into you slapping a Dryden on top of the stack and also being able to destroy face-up cards, Whiptail being non-destruction, non-targeting, banish removal. There's just a whole lot of things that the Zoo deck does very good, very efficiently. And the deck has just been made to be really cookie cutter efficient. And that's why it's going to win. That is why the deck dominates. The deck dominates all these events. Like Euros was insane. It was like 43 out of the top 64 decks were pure zoo or something like that. That number might be off by one or two, but I know it was at least like 41 to 43 decks were zoo. And that's ridiculous. Um, that's ridiculous considering how far down the deck has gone in terms of what its capabilities are because at the end of the day the zoo theme was designed inherently broken and it was designed to work so well in what its core mechanic was that it makes the shittiest cards in the game absolutely amazing techs going into the biggest event of the year. You cannot tell me that at any point in history a card like Shuffle Reborn would ever be considering play until we get to the point where we're literally just exceed summoning with one monster on top of a zoo name. And that's the point that we're at because of how this deck functions. And that's kind of impressive. But yeah, the entire scope of this deck has just been greatly diminished ever since Norden went away because the fusion sub combos really added a lot of complexity layers into the Zoo deck. And it made it really interesting to play. Now, I don't think Norden should still be here. I think Norden should have been banned a long time ago. In fact, I don't think we should have had Norden and Rapier existing in the game at the same point ever. The OCG never had that problem because they banned Norden a long-ass time ago because they realized his ass was super degenerate for what he allows in the game. We didn't have that luxury, so we had all these interesting Norden things going on with our Zoo decks. But that added other complexity layers in terms of technical play, what you do with your rank 4s, how many rank 4s you can make, what you can do with this, what you can do with that, the ratios of your engine cards versus defensive cards in your deck, everything started to matter. Your deck building became really important and all that sort of stuff. Now with Norden gone, Zoo is incredibly cookie cutter and 
the focus is more on technical play. Zoom mirrors are absolutely awful right now. I am sorry. They're the most boring thing in the world to watch. I cannot stand watching the zoom mirrors right now because of just... <sighs> Best decks of the past have always been entertaining to watch mirror matches for. Dragon Rulers, that mirror match was insane to watch. Necro's mirror match, those things were insane to watch because it was all about pacing and resourcing. And it was super fast, super interactive, super like in tune with both players like capabilities and skill sets. The zoom mirror is just so basic. And it literally devolves down to a sequence between you and your opponent of, I have it. Do you have it? Better have it. And then they have it. And you're like, oh, well, I guess I better have it to answer your had it. And then you have it in the form of you have the out to their out. And then they're like, well, duelist, you'll find that I have the out to your out. And it's just like, it just goes back and forth in this sequence until literally each player is down to the point where like, okay, one player just can't play anymore because one player is sticking Drydents because they were able to force through their plays. That's the problem I have with, with this. But that's how the deck interacts with every other deck in the format as well. Zoo is just so well equipped to do its one thing super efficiently and it shuts every other deck out. Pendulums can't exist because every other card that's not that one normal summoned monster that they played is going to be a defensive card. I really want to play Pendulums at Nationals because it's the last time I'm going to be able to play this deck at its full capabilities before Lynx sets in, but I can't. I can't if I'm trying to win. And that's a huge, huge problem for the game when you have these amazing cards in the form of the Zephyr cards and the Pendulum Magicians that you just 100% can't play. You cannot play these cards because of how oppressive Zoo is in the format because it's just been stripped so far down and so bare that it does its one simple thing, it's one action that it's meant to do, and it does it over and over again every single game. Any one monster is all you need to start the play. There's 16 starter cards in the average zoo deck. There's 10 zoo monsters, 3 tinkies, 3 barrages. That's 16 starter cards. That's still a very high amount of starter cards when you consider that any one monster, even opening a random Thurblade, even opening a Ram Ram, is perfectly acceptable. Because at the end of the day, you still make a Dryden, you float back a monster with Chaka 9, maybe if it was Ram Ram, you brought back a floater, good job. And then you also search Whiptail, or whatever monster continues your play next turn. And then every other card in their hand was defensive cards which make it really hard for you to play the game if you're not playing a deck that is structured the same way, and there currently is none. I just, uh, I really cannot understand how things have gotten so bad. YCS Pittsburgh, 64 rats were in the top 32, so every single deck in top 32 was playing Zoo. I was more okay with that because it was such a runaway best deck then but at least it had variations. It was very, very deck builder focused during that time frame. But now it's just not. The lists are so standardized, the lists are so cookie cutter, there's no insane text that you can do because everything that you're going to add to the zoo engine, whether it's a completely separate deck engine to make it a hybrid or whether it's a different card or whatever, it's just gonna be decreasing the performance of what we've already established to be the correct instance of how you need to be building this deck. And that's not how I like to approach my Nationals experiences. I don't know about you. I like for there to be variation. I like for there to be a best deck, definitely. Because that's the fallback. That's the boogeyman in the room. You go into that format, you go into that event, expecting to beat that deck. But, in reality, there's no real efficient way to do that currently. With Zoo, because of how efficient it is at doing what it's done. It's an inherently broken archetype, and unfortunately, there's gonna have to be some major things done to remove it from the game's history going forward, because currently the deck doesn't even get hindered by Link format. People are just like, I can't wait till Link format when people don't play this Zoo deck anymore. That doesn't actually change anything. The Zoo deck and the way it functions right now 
is completely fine playing in Link format because all the deck does is normal summon a monster, make Broad Bull search a card, make Chalkanine summon something from Grave, summon one Dryden, set all their cards or hold all their defensive hand traps and stuff in hand, and then pass turn. That's all the deck does. And it's very easy for the deck to cycle out a second Dryden, even with only one extra monster zone in Link format because if the Dryden they have on the board lives until the next turn or it dies, they summon it from Graveyard off Chalk and Nine, use Tiger Mortar to put a material under it, and then slap another Dryden in the extra monster zone. So then they have a Dryden that was summoned from Grave with a material under it, and then a Dryden that was summoned from Extra Deck properly in their main monster zone, and they just keep doing that over and over again. Like the deck, as it stands, is very much less rank four focused of Digesto Emerald and all that, and it's very much just I'm gonna summon Dryden and pass my turn. But the deck is incredibly efficient at doing that. And that's why the deck is going to win Nationals. And no other deck really has a chance. At least in previous years, like last year, we had things like Domain Monarchs. We had things like Cosmo Demise. Like, there were so many different decks last format that you could play. While Extra Deck Monarch and PKBA were considered the best decks going into that event, there were still so many other decks that you could play going into that event. You could play Pendulums. You could play Domain Monarch, which ended up stealing the event. And I don't see anything like that happening this year. Unless there's like some super spicy pendulum deck that shows up out of nowhere and is like, I'm just going to win this event. I don't see anything else happening other than Zoo just playing these incredibly boring mirror matches all the way to the finals and then winning. I just don't see it. I don't see anything else happening in the, in the realistic spectrum of how Yu-Gi-Oh! is played. And that makes me very sad. So I'm not really excited for Nationals this year. Nationals is in like four days. And I'm not actually hyped for it. I'm more hyped to go to Chicago, go to the food festival they have downtown on Friday, and then go to Anime Midwest or Anime West or whatever. Whatever is in the same convention center as the Yu-Gi-Oh! event. If I lose out of the event, I'm going to an anime convention. I am a massive weeb. I am completely fine with just going to an anime convention and having no Yu-Gi-Oh content or no Yu-Gi-Oh contact rather for the rest of the weekend even though it's nationals I'm just not excited for it because Zoo is just such an oppressive force in its incredibly weakened cookie cutter standardized state and I just don't like it <laughs> it's ultimately the thing is that I just do not like it because the deck has just devolved and been stripped down to its most optimized form and that form is disgusting as fuck to me but anyway this has been a very very long sort of off-topic discussion but oh well if you guys made it this far then give a, a hashtag zodiac cancer in the comments down below I really just don't enjoy the zodiac deck anymore I really want it to go away so that other things can flourish once hybrids stopped being a possibility was when I sort of started losing interest in it because I really loved Zoo for what it allowed you to do with hybrids with three rap here. Even to a lesser extent with two rap here. When Shock and Nine came out, the Perform Pal hybrid was amazing. But unfortunately, it can't go second against Pure Zoo because of how optimized Pure Zoo is and they just shove Dridents and shit up your fucking ass until you just can't deal with it anymore. And it's just a bad time. But anyway. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all that nonsense. Links, as always, are in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly and help me make some future content come to fruition a bit faster in terms of uh, different projects I've got slated, then definitely go check out the Patreon if you want to support the channel, because it's the best way to do so. And you'd have my eternal gratitude if you want to help me out. But other than that, as I've already said, like, comment, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. I just, I can't anymore. Like I already said... If you made it this far into the video, give me a hashtag Zodiac Cancer in the comments down below. Let me know if you like these sort of like off script, off kilter, like just me rambling videos because I'm more than willing to do more of them. Uh, especially since I've got this little setup set up. But anyway, take care guys. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Take care.